Hey, I'm back, so this time I just wanted to do the follow-up of the previous video that I will put in the description box if you want to check it out first about how to use the thermal lock, which is this great thing. So it's really important for this to really have everything set and really stable. So I'm using a kind of vice noise screw thing on the table so that it stays into place. So here I'm just going to do a little kind of, um, it's, um, um, it's like the flush setting, that's the name I was looking for, but kind of a different version, a kind of, um, I forgot the word, but anyway, yeah, it's just like a flush setting, but that is easier and that takes up less time to do. So we're going to do the usual way, so if you haven't seen the first video I've made on the subject, then I really will highly recommend you to watch it. I use my small kind of punches like there to take the stones, but I also sometimes use the wax because it's sticky enough so it stays into place but I do prefer this thing so I just put a bit of water or dump it in a bit of saliva because it really sticks well and then you have to be very perpendicular and put it in and once it's in up you go side on the side and you just slide to the side and the stone should be in and should be set and stay in so of course because you didn't see anything on the first one I will do another one so you can see it better the movement how I did it and now I'm going to use a simple hammer and I'm going to use a hole punch uh, I don't remember the name of that either but it's something that I've made myself that I've sharpened a little bit and that I've hardened it's hardened steel the reason why you want it quite sharp is because you want to be qu quite precise because if it's too far away it could like not be useful if it's too close to the stone it could crack it so this is something I would not suggest and recommend for beginners but for people that already have a bit of experience so the way we're doing it is that by pushing the metal uh, we'll, we'll make a mark a markation but not only will it be nice like decorative but it will also be the act of pushing the metal on the stone that will help it to keep it its stability and stay into place you know so I'm going to do it the way I do the settings usually which is to go north south east west you know to really and you see the movement you really push for, forward the the tool so that it really will be on the stone but not too close because we don't want to break it so it's something that you kind of have to uh, estimate and it's only with practice that you will be estim you will be able to estimate right but usually half a mil is the, the perfect distance to be able to make something not only neat but that will also uh, test the stand the test of time so to speak and you can switch, I'm um, switching right there with a, a larger one because I want also the holes to look, to be decorative like I was saying. So I'm just going step by step gradually. I would really advise you to go slowly on the hammer, not to break anything and to be quite safely doing your thing. You could also, I thought of it afterward, but if you want to pre-drill a bit small holes, really tiny holes just to have marks so you can then use the puncher hole. Um, first using your Fordham, you know, with a... Uh, forêt, a drill bit, it's you, you, your pick. So here I'm doing it again so you can see really perpendicular. I have the stone, I put it in, push it in, then go to the side, tack, and it's out. And it shouldn't move. And this is a great technique too. If you've made holes that are too big and the stones is really moving, moving in there, the best way I find to kind of try to deal with it is this method because you will be able to adjust and put the 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 the, the stone the face it stone back in and make it stay so it really it's up to you your choice there my friend and so once again we do it on the top part we just hop find the right distance a small punch and then when we're happy with it up we do the bottom and then left right and it's important not to go too too crazy on the hammer and you can always go back on it you know like it's better to not go too hard and make markations step by step than just like like mess it up you know and here we go last one and there's the last one, but I'm not going to show you the last one on camera because I thought that was long enough. Uh, it's really a simple principle that you can use uh, for many things, but 
I, you know, I didn't discover anything. I just tried it out for myself with trial and error, and I was happy with it because it really uh, gives also a kind of um, artisan touch that I find is uh, like aesthetically pleasing because I thought it really matched the design I was making on this one. So you really have to take your time to do um, kind of a neat job, and at the same time, it it kind of goes faster than the usual thing if you're kind of if you're trained yourself, yourself you in a way for it. So um, it's something that I use often and the thermal lock for this is absolutely brilliant. So if you want to check all those other videos, I'll put them in the description box obviously like I was mentioning. And uh, before leaving you, I wanted to show you the final result after having done the last setting and also polishing it. So here we go. Uh, if you want to see the the, the next Next stage, here we go. So I wanted to show you how it looks and for that I um, actually got inspired by uh, the Charles Loloma, which is uh, a Native American silver smithy, which is a really like, he's really kind of high level, you know. And most of his work, I'm paraphrasing, but I, I read somewhere an interview of, of his where he was saying that we don't always show people uh, what's inside, you know, they don't really know most of the time the real us and that's why he emphasized a lot on his work on inlays that are like inside uh, for instance uh, bracelets or inside rings and I thought wow and I like the concept and so here I find a little way to kind of use it for myself because if you want to show you show but it's really discreet and if you don't want to show you don't show the ring doesn't you don't have to show the stones so I really like this concept and uh, that's why I wanted to kind of do something with it and uh, well I also wanted to mention that this is kind of a you know approach to jewelry making that doesn't really always follow the steps of the more traditional ways of doing it but I'm not there to be traditional or not I'm just there to suggest um, like things that have worked for me so to speak and that I enjoyed making so if it helps you it's great if you're not into that well you're not into that you know so it's all good anyway and I just hope that this video was out of service and I'll see you around for another video I don't know when yet so perhaps project of the month will be up next so I'll see you around bye bye